welcome to another one of my videos. So, okay, I really had to make this video the minute I watched this other video because, oh my God, I'm so frustrated by this. So this is a video by Happy Healthy Vegan. And if you just look at the title, Megan Bowen forced by doctor to quit vegan diet, bleeding intestines, okay? <laughs> Her intestines were bleeding. I feel so bad for her. So then Ryan decides to make this video criticizing what she decided to do in order to fix her bleeding in intestines. And she used a vegan diet to try to fix her problem. She has IBS and she decided to take um, certain high fiber foods out of her diet. That's what she called them and go on basically kind of like a keto version of um, vegan using soy and nuts and stuff like that to try to fix this IBS problem. Now, Ryan pulls out this one study. He says, the science is behind us here. It says, it's widely believed that IBS is caused by a deficient intake of dietary fiber. So clearly, she's just not getting enough fiber. That must have been the problem. She must have been eating low fiber foods before when she clearly said she wasn't. And it's basically taking what she said and not believing it at all. And this is hardly the science. I'm making quotation marks right here with my hands because um, like there's tons of studies out there. You picked one study and you were showing this and, and this is just like one part of the study. What happened in the study? So this was just from the study that Ryan lists, and it says dietary fiber acts on the gastrointestinal tract through several mechanisms, including, including increased fecal mass with stimulation, irritation of the colonic mucosa with increasing secretions and peristalsis, fermentation byproducts, particularly short-chain fatty acids on the microbiota, immune system, and neuroendocrine system. So well, clearly it's not just the fermentation byproducts that can cause problems with the GI tract. There's many different things. And in this particular study, they actually recommend supplementing psyllium for IBS symptoms. I don't know if that's a great idea, but that's what this study found. Then Ryan goes on to recommend a low FODMAP diet because I guess that's what's recommended for IBS. And in it, he highlights here tofu. But if you keep reading, tempeh, peanut butter, many nuts and seeds, many fruits and vegetables, added fats, condiments, gluten-free grains. So all of the things she basically said she was doing, she was doing nut butters, she was doing tofu and high fat diet. And this is basically a low FODMAP, FODMAP diet. He kind of says, oh, you should be eating bananas. I eat them all the time and they don't bother me, blah, blah, blah. She mentions that she's allergic to soy. So then Ryan decides to plug his own books here and says that, you know, there's only one recipe or something like that in his books that uses soy and that there's tons of things you can eat that's not soy. <laughs> And her point was like, soy has a lot of protein. What am I going to eat? You know, um, because a lot of vegan food has soy. So he goes on to recommend something called duckweed, which of course he is sponsored by, or he has a link in his description to get, um, you know, a discount or whatever. And he's saying, you know, duckweed has tons of protein and he's basically in one hand, he's saying you don't need that much protein on a vegan diet. And then on the other hand, he's plugging this protein that he has um, a sponsorship from. Uh, so it just doesn't really make sense. Like it's kind of hypocritical to say that, well, that's a myth that you don't need protein on a vegan diet, but I do take protein and here's my sponsored product. So this just kind of bothered me and it just got me thinking like these vegans on YouTube and Instagram and all these social media platforms, do they really care about you? Like if you come down and say, look, my intestines are bleeding from the inside, are they going to sit with you at your hospital bed while you get pumped with all these, you know, chemicals and medicines to try to save you? You're going to hold your hand through this whole thing and, you know, help you pay for your hospital bills or like in my case, my daughter's dental bills. Are they really going to be there for you, you know? 
And even my vegan friends, like a lot of them dropped me the minute I started questioning whether or not it was the vegan diet that was giving me all these problems, you know? So the minute you try to solve your problems and and question where they're coming from, if, if you're going to go towards non-vegan solutions, you're going to get dropped. Like it happened to me a lot. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's something that they do. So are they really your friends? And it's kind of just like what Joey Car- Carpstrong says, you know, veganism is an ethical stance. It's about saving the animals. It is not about your health. It is not about, yeah, achieving perfect health or anything like that. And you know what? I actually agree with his honesty in this case. You know, uh, that's that's the most honest thing that a lot of vegans are saying. It's not about you. It's not about your health. We don't care. It's about the animals and you should put the animals above yourself. And and that's kind of what this speciesism thing is all about, except it's it's worse than speciesism. It's like you need to put animals above you. But I kind of wish some of these health promoting vegans would take a lesson from Joey and realize that their health promoting diet is not healthy and it makes a lot of people sick.